Hello and welcome to International Ideas session on budgeting and financing of elections. My name is Erik Asplund, Program Officer, uh, and with me today I have Therese Pierce Lanella, the Head of Electoral Processes Unit. Welcome, Therese. Thank you. Uh, Therese, how can one measure the integrity uh, or quality of elections? At its very, very simplest, it is um, the trust of the people and the political actors, and this trust is is um, manifested in the form of accepted results and an orderly transition of power following a well-run election. That would be approximately how you would measure quality. Of course, in that picture, um, the verdict of expert witnesses plays in, and that might be the media that people listen to, journalists and so forth. It could be observer groups or uh, senior diplomats, for example, who, who weigh in. It could be uh, things that are said on, on social media that, that play into how people perceive those, those elections or perhaps specialized academics. So there are people whose, whose specialist knowledge um, uh, weighs into that. Unfortunately, the clean links between um, a well-run election and an accepted result, it's not always um, so simple or so straightforward. Um, that can be thwarted by misunderstandings about what's happened or how those, or, or rumors, or how the, the something that's, that's um, a mistake that's happened, um, how it plays out or how, how it's understood. And there also may be people in whose interest it is to uh, discredit the elections. So sometimes the link between well-run elections and accepted elections is, is not so straightforward. Thank you. Now, why is trust so important for an electoral risk, uh, electoral uh, management body? Yeah, I, I mentioned the word trust because somehow that is the the the, the fundament. Um, the the one outcome that you want when organizing an election is an accepted result. And accepted has two parts. One part is is a correct result, an accurate result that reflects the the will of the people as as expressed in the ballot boxes. But it also means a trusted result, so that that the political stakeholders, the the political actors, and the voters accept that that result is the correct one. And so trust is somehow in, in its, it, it's, it's, it's essential, it is foundational to, to running elections. But it also makes elections um, much more easy to run uh, because uh, all transactions are made more easy when there is trust between uh, different, uh, different people, different parties and so forth. Hmm. Now, how does a, an election management body gain the trust uh, of the people? Yeah, there's there's a number of ways, and there's no simple strategy. But the um, the most basic one is, of course, delivery over time. So an election management body who consistently delivers elections that people see as well run will be more trusted to do so in the future. But it also has to do with um, behaviors. Um, when people meet with an authority, they expect to see um, um, respect, um, some kind of procedural justice. That is, they, they expect to see fairness in the way that they're treated. And so the way that um, uh, election management body staff behave uh, in the front lines, during registration, during candidate registration, that has a big impact on people's um, trust in addition to delivery. Mm -hmm. Finally, another aspect that's important to take into consideration is, is pathways of redress, I guess we might say, is that if something goes wrong or if some person feels that, that um, the process has been unfair, uh, that there need to be pathways to take care of that um, uh, distress. Um, so pathways of, of, of certainty are helpful to building trust as well. On that note, is, is trust expensive, do you think? Funnily enough, and this is well known in the business community, it is in fact distrust that is expensive. When you do not have distrust, when you do not have trust in society, when you have distrust in society, it makes uh, transactions more expensive because you have to have a third party guarantee for anything that happens. It makes transactions more, more complicated. Um, distrust, 
uh, a, a process that is not trusted requires many additional security mechanisms, perhaps very, very high quality ballot papers um, that are that can be very expensive to procure. Um, it could be um, armored cars and so forth to transport ballot papers. So in high trust societies, some of those things are not needed in the same way as they are in, in, in low trust election environments. Thank you, Therese. Now, um, many electoral management bodies are legitimately under-resourced. Yeah. Um, what advice uh, would you uh, be able to give an election management body to obtain more funds or to better use the resources that they already have? This is hard, and this is something we're in discussion with uh, in, in, in a number of our regional offices right now um, with many stakeholders. And interestingly, this is in, in all types of countries. Even the most um, well-developed democracies have uh, an extraordinary pressure on public agencies to, to cut costs at a regular basis, and they have difficulty justifying their budgets um, each time they put them forward. But this is a particularly difficult issue for countries that are transitioning from a high level of electoral assistance to running their elections with government funding. So this is an issue that faces um, many. And it's a hard one, but um, one thing that we're learning is that step one is a conversation. If we think about societies, uh, if we think about elections as a, as a societal endeavor rather than as an event, then the conversation is a societal conversation about the type of electoral democracy that we want to see. Who do we want to be involved in that electoral democracy? What does representation look like in our country? Who is represented and how do we bring in the most marginalized? Now that kind of a conversation can lead to a, a reframing of the idea of cost of elections to being in fact an investment in an electoral democracy or an investment in, in the society that, that we would like to see. Um, there are of course, some kind of tried and true tips for keeping costs reasonable. And um, that is in general, taking advantage of the normal means of transportation, communication, recruitment that are normally used. Um, so that is not importing something um, that is different in particular for an election because that drives costs up. Mm. So using the normal means of communication. Um, and also another possible tip is um, interagency coordination. That is because elections only happen um, on an irregular basis. So taking advantage of resources that exist within other agencies. Um, it could be um, whether it's taking advantage of, of, of teachers and schools or whether it's taking advantage of an authority who has a fleet of cars. So this kind of interagency um, cooperation can be helpful to, to, to spread the, the burden. If we take the example of, of cybersecurity right now, um, that's an area in which um, interagency cooperation helps spread both um, knowledge, risks, and also costs. Thank you very much, Trias, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much. Really a more interesting topic than <laughs> we might imagine. Thank you.